Hello and a warm welcome to the May 22 video on examiner's reports for IBDP chemistry internal assessment. There's some quite some big surprises in here for me. Uh, I'm an examiner, uh, so let's see how we do. The feedback was in general for the suitability. Most were suitable, that's good, but there were a lot of exceptions. Uh, secondary data comes in for a lot of comments, which I'm going to focus on. That seems to be my uh, main area of expertise right now. First comment is they were more like essays and unsuitable to uh, address the criteria of internal assessments. That made me stand back a little bit and have a look at my IAs for this year. Do they read like an essay or an internal assessment? I'm pretty sure I've hit the rubric. I'd like a bit more detail on that from the IB. Uh, there was an impressive improvement in investigations using secondary but those on simulators were not well implemented. There are more comments on that shortly, which I will go into. Uh, very few investigations used phone apps. Uh, certainly I've employed those to good effect on a number of occasions. They did like the hybrid investigations, which I've been pushing, which is great. So uh, putting together a simulation, a database, uh, a phone, all three together can get some really scintillating high level chemistry uh, out there which should score highly against the IA criteria. Okay, too many was simplistic, um, lower level, um, I'll probably say MYP, IGCSE level chemistry was too abundant. Please make sure your chemistry is diploma level chemistry, not less. Um, of course, every year, uh, half the IA research questions will be related to vitamin C, dissolved oxygen, which was uh, confused with BOD, the biochemical oxygen demand. Iron in tablets, I can't believe that's still being submitted, and vegetables, don't, don't be submitting that. With the categoric data we've been saying for years is not acceptable for chemistry IA. We should know that by now. Uh, activation energy clock reactions were very popular. Why? Well, because they work. And as a teacher, I know that many students' IAs don't work. And then a good place to go to when you push the time is for something which is guaranteed to give you great results with good data processing. You should hit the high bands. Um, teachers should focus on our subjects. There was too much biology, too much physics. If it's not chemistry, not chemistry on the diploma syllabus, don't bother. I've been saying this for a long time. A hypothesis is not required. Don't put one in. You're not going to get downgraded if you put one in, but don't bother. Um, understanding antacids was not was uh, very popular, but often not well managed, particularly when they're using things with a proton pump inhibitor, that's not going to react with an acid. So you can't say that was due to anything in the antacid when there was no antacid which was in there. Surprisingly, a number of schools used very dangerous things like butan-1,4-diol, which is a recreational drug. Um, other schools were burning um, Alcohols on the top of a balance with clear risks to, to the uh, students and all those around them. Personal engagement. The message has got through. Yes, it's not since I was a little boy or little girl. There we go. Nobody cares. Okay. Most candidates actually got a two. I don't remember that being said in the examiner's reports, but they did. Okay. Um, the problem came when a student had a good idea and a wonderful potential research question which was poorly carried out. You can have the world's best research question. If you don't address the criteria during the internal assessment, it's not going to score well. Secondary data, I'll keep emphasizing, secondary data explorations of the change in the boiling point of a homologous series um, were just unchallenging. Okay, um, we'll return to that point shortly. Candidates chose a correct topic, but the variables didn't allow to establish a relationship between the independent and the dependent variables. The thing which I always say is that to students, you should stand back, look at your research question, look at your method, look at your variables. Are you actually testing the research question you postulated at the beginning? Background seems to be a challenge for many students. It's either too low level or incorrect, or they're not using SI units, <clears throat> or excuse me, or IUPAC uh, nomenclature for describing uh, systems. Uh, intermolecular forces are often neglected. Collision theory was often artificially used. And many students put in um, erratic uh, calculations or erratic equations or formulae, which had nothing to do with the research question, which added no value to the overall internal assessment. There's no need to put 
SL or HL on the student IA. Okay, so please don't put SL, HL on the submitted sample. They don't like that. Um, it wasn't uncommon to find methodologies that would not allow answering the research question. If you're investigating the effect of temperature on, let's hazard a guess, at rate of reaction, you need to show how you control temperature. Too many students think that a, a thermometer or a water bath is enough. It's not. You need to monitor it over time. You, don't, you, you need to prove that the water bath being set at 30 degrees C, it is actually at 30 degrees C. We can't, as kids seem to assume, the numbers they're given on machines are the numbers they actually get in reality. They are not. Producing simulations that provide no useful information on the real world problem, there's no point going above 40 degrees C if you're looking at uh, B or D, because in nature it doesn't go above 38, 39, I assume. They didn't like vitamin C, particularly when it's on 80 or 90 degrees C. Uh, that showed poor critical thinking. So the kids were losing marks in exploration, they were losing marks in their evaluation, and potentially in communication as well, because of an absence of critical thinking. This is the big stand back, look holistically at the IA that the kid's doing. Variables in a table is liked. We like variables, variables in a table, me too. And don't forget about the chemistry. The chemistry is often neglected, limiting reactants, excess reagents, uh, storage times, all these things will impact the investigation. Um, students didn't appreciate that they, uh, they're using the hydrated compounds rather than the, uh, or the anhydrous compounds, and as a consequence, their mole calculations were incorrect. The IB said they don't mind investigations with more than one variable, that's okay. But they should be connected, not just to random things somewhere in the syllabus. Okay. Um, and I was, this was an alarm for me. Let's have a little alarm here. So let's have, I'm going to give a mic drop to this one. Okay. Um, it's saying that the, uh, it, where is it? The wine. Oh, there it is. Oh, people looking at natural products overlooked the maturation stage of vegetables and fruits or the storage time, or the, it was, it's just like, what, who puts that? I never thought of that. Maybe you did. I don't know. Um, electrochemistry. Uh, students were putting photographs of them doing galvanic cells or electrolysis, and they were actually not controlling the variables in the photograph, which they talked about in the method. So maybe the electrodes were touching the salt bridge, or the salt bridge was not fresh, and it should be each time or they had the usual problems of controlling the mass of the electrode. They were looking at the amount deposited and that, that's always a, a nightmare to control that. They don't suggest how you actually get around that, but they just say they don't like it for you to bear in mind. Let's have another mic drop. There we go. More investigations using databases relied on the minimum expected three sources to collect sufficient data. Now I have an issue with this because the databases that, that we use are limited by our ability to pay or not to pay for them. And the amount of free databases available to students should not be uh, defined by their ability to pay. So we know there's PubChem and there's NIST and there's uh, ChemSpider and there's um, Webmo and there's John Chu's wonderful site and all these things. But I hope that the IB appreciate that the ones that like John Chewy and Webmo um, are an amalgamation of many of the sites that feed into them. And I just hope that the moderator realizes just what the kids are actually doing when they use their specific sites for their internal assessments. And it does say many weak students use the data booklet as a database. Uh, it's, it's just not. No. Um, molecular modeling. I didn't know this. Let's have another mic drop. There we go. Molecular modeling. Uh, if you're using visualization, then you should recognize whether it's calculating the properties or it's actually com coming from an experiment. I've never made that uh, distinction. I don't think it's been made before. Okay. List of materials is not a requirement, but if you do it, include the uncertainties and make sure they are correct. Often the uncertainties were incorrect. Another mic drop moment. Students continue to state pressure doesn't change if the experiment is carried out in the same place on the same day. I don't mind that. I've never had a problem with that. But the IB is saying that this assumption is incorrect as changes occur during the day and in many places vary substantially due to weather conditions. Again, I hope they appreciate that many reactions are not going to be pressure dependent. It doesn't matter if you're dropping a metal into some acid, it's still going to fizz hydrogen. Okay, 
the external pressure during the space of an hour of experimental data taking is not going to have a big impact on there. The use of universal indicator does not meet IA requirements. We've said that before, moving on. Um, redundant steps are not necessary. You don't need to say that you rinsed the burette. You don't need to say that you washed the beaker. Okay, we, ex we assume that you're doing that. And precision uh, and number protocols are raised as always. Don't say 0 0.1, say 0 0.1000 moles per decimeter cube, if that's what you are doing. Safety was pretty good. Safety was pretty good. And um, diluting by default does not help the environment much. So if you just say diluted and wash, washed to waste, that's not as good as considering a substitute and putting that down the sink. Okay. Analysis, my favorite part. Okay. Common errors. Raw data is frequently not fully recorded or is disappointingly recorded. Better candidates uh, even omitted their qualitative data. Don't forget to have that section at the beginning on your qualitative data. Don't forget, if you're saying you're controlling something, you need to record that you have controlled it. You're not controlling the temperature if you don't record it every few seconds while you're doing your experiments. And again, uh, pictures. Make sure, be careful of the pictures you're putting in your internal assessment. That might just give away that you've done something poorly inaccurately or unsafely and you will get marks down for that. Processing and propagation have improved over previous sessions but dilutions and serial dilutions were uh, seriously misunderstood. There was too much averaging of raw data and then plotting raw data on a graph. We want some data processing of the raw data. I saw many where they were putting the volume of the titrant and not converting it to concentration to make it a continuous variable. Okay. Statistics, always a hot topic. Standard deviation on fewer than five points, don't do it. Less than five points, it doesn't matter. And that's five measures of one independent variable, not five independent variable measurement points. Okay. It does like, and I like this one, the half range value, that's good. Half range method is an accurate way. They like that one. The databases, the half range rule uh, was, was liked, that was good. If you're a biologist and you're using ANOVA or you're using the Tukey test, then you should have a minimum of 10 values or it is not admissible in uh, chemistry internal assessments. Stats again. Students were uh, mixing up R squared, which is the uh, correlation, uh, sorry, the coefficient of determination with R, which is the correlation coefficient. Make sure you understand the differences. Mic drop. Here's another one. <laughs> Very few considered the possibility of comparing values on different simulations, databases, or articles. I'm sure many teachers will share this. Many of our students doing simulations and databases look for data to compare, and there is none. There is just none there. And we're putting the statement there is none there. I hope the IB are listening. This is not a, a, a free thing that we can just do at will. This is very difficult. Okay. Um, Many investigations use titrants to establish relationships instead of taking the trouble to find corresponding concentrations. We've said that. Um, the number of significant first significant figures were poorly understood. Decimal places were inconsistent. That's a common thing that we mark students down for when we're, when we're moderating. Uh, an appropriate scale, little small graphs in the corner of the page rather than using the full page. And confusing continuous and categoric data was, was, was quite evident in this year's sample. The IB wants us to describe a trend, whether it's in inversely proportional or relatively proportional or whatever it happens to be. We need to state the trend, but this was poorly understood by many students. Evaluation. The criteria, this is the most difficult to score well on. The IB always say kids are getting tired. I don't think that's true. I don't think kids are getting tired. Mic drop. I think that what's happening is that the the way to achieve against the criteria has been poorly communicated. Minimal discussion on reliability and validity. Reliability and validity are mentioned, but we're expecting a full formal section on this. Perhaps the IB need to say that. Oh, it's not fair to the kids. The impact of errors on the results was often ignored or vaguely mentioned. Only strong candidates discussed outliers and attempted a valid explanation. I saw pretty good adherence to that. I thought they were pretty good. Um, this approach exemplifies. See, personal engagement goes throughout the reports. And if you couldn't be bothered to do some data processing, you couldn't be bothered to make a graph, and you couldn't be bothered to discuss 
the magnitude of the errors in the evaluation, you're not going to score well in personal engagement and probably one of us. There are consequential knock-ons for that as well. Procedural issues like I failed to do this or I misread this, we don't want to hear that. The IB don't want to hear that. Okay, We need to talk about methodological issues and how you would improve them in your internal assessment. Or are you going to be castigated as making superficial comments, which nobody wants? Okay. Communication. There's old Greta Thunberg there. Thankfully, she stopped communicating quite so much. Uh, many responses had a suitable structure, easy to follow. They liked it when teachers said this, but there were often issues. Uh, candidates provided not enough information to reproduce the methodology. It should be step by step so anybody in intelligent chemist can reproduce it. You must have a table. I always tell my students have a table of exemplar calculations which discuss each data point which you have calculated. Poor graphing, poor number protocols. I keep saying that number protocols have to be wonderful. The wrong graph, still getting bar graphs. Just stop, just stop. Uh, poor use of convention. We don't want pounds. We don't want feet. We don't want inches. We want uh, centimeters cubed, decimeters cubed, etc. And missing out state symbols on equations is just lazy, right? So in the future, um, some schools just use the prescribed practicals. That's not appropriate for internal assessment. Don't use the practicals we have to use for teaching for your internal assessment. Just lazy. Um, have the chance to immediately adapt or extend the data I provide if it's right. So if it's possible, the students should be reflecting throughout. It's the IB, they love the reflection, whether it's CAS or TOC or extended essay. They want a reflection throughout the internal assessment. With secondary data, plentiful data, yes, we do that, but that three thing, and that three thing is still new to me. Um, but you can have up to four or five independent variables as long as they are related, because you've got to hit this magic mythical 10 hours, okay? Let me know how you hit the 10 hours. Um, mic drop. Simulations should not be taken lightly. We don't. Uh, the simulator generates data. The candidate should do all else. So the candidate, we do. We do. Database investigations should generate more data than traditional hands-on. In both types, that's referring to simulation and database, a minimum of three data should be collected. Uncertainties must be addressed. I think these put where possible. I think that's an unfair expectation on teachers, schools, and most importantly, on students. Time the IA so students have enough knowledge in chemistry. Clearly, we don't want GCSE. Okay. Whatever investigation is carried out, they should uh, have deep research questions, although they've already admitted at the start, so half of them are predictably vitamin C, rates of reaction, uh, electrochemistry. Um, describe the methodology uh, in a paragraph briefly. The same briefly, but at the beginning they said they wanted it in more detail. Make your mind up, IB. Uh, encourage procedures to use lower quantities. So this is the judicious quantities of chemicals. That's your environmental ethical considerations. Don't just say you're going to wear gloves and goggles and keep a safe distance. You need to keep uh, look for alternatives to answer your research questions safely and then look at how you're going to minimize its impact on the environment. Okay. Ethical issues are often relevant when using databases, even when not limited to them. Answers on a postcard, please. Um, errors, I've been banging on about this for the last couple of videos. You must do a systematic and random. They've said this in the last two, maybe three examiners reports. There's no excuse for not doing those now. Okay. Um, students using textbook can use textbooks, their notes, their journals. Um, is good. They don't mind that. That's okay for the background information. Um, different investigations, suggestions of different investigations as extensions add no value. So they don't like more of the same. They don't just want a wider independent variable range. They don't want a different investigation. Dear IB, tell us what you want. We'll do it. Okay. Errors in calculations. That happens all the time, which will affect the conclusions drawn. The clear thing is when you've got big error bars, you identify a trend which is only within the error bars, there is no trend, and that sinks many an internal assessment. So, big takeaways from this examiner's report. This idea of three different databases or three different simulations in one internal assessment. Please tell us how you expect us to, to actually do this. Um, you can't ask for more detail, and then at the end of the report say you want less detail. Um, and maybe suggesting photographs are catching schools out. It's maybe the wrong message to send. During the pandemic, we're all trying our best to get the best marks that we can.
Okay, that's the examiner's report for May 22. If you've got any comments, please put them in the box below. Don't forget, smash that subscribe button. Thanks very much. Bye.